Hello and welcome back everyone. Today we have an all new video on Tutor LMS Academy on one of the latest settings of Tutor LMS. With the recent updates of Tutor LMS, we have introduced a new settings tab called Authentication with enhanced security features for our users. The Authentication settings tab is available only in the Pro version of Tutor LMS. These settings allow instructors and admins to protect their e-learning platform from spammers and fraud. So there are five sections in the authentication tab, two-factor authentication, fraud protection, limit active devices, email verification, and lastly, social login. So we're gonna go ahead and go through all these settings today. So to access these settings, navigate to Tutor LMS Pro, settings, and then finally the authentication tab. Before we begin though, we need to warn our users that enabling the authentication features in Tutor LMS may result in a conflict with caching or third-party WordPress security plugins. So to avoid any potential issues, we recommend that you do not cache the login and registration page of your Tutor LMS site. Alright, so with that out of the way, let's go through each of these settings one by one and see what they can do. First up, we have two-factor authentication or 2FA. This is a security system that allows the website admin to integrate two separate distinct forms of identification in order to register or log into the website. So if you toggle 2FA, when a student or instructor tries to register or log into your e-learning site, then they will get a six-digit OTP in their email. After you enable 2FA, you'll find these two new options, method and location. In method, you can choose the two-factor authentication method. For now, we are only offering an email verification method. And from location, you can configure locations where you want to add 2FA. You can choose to add 2FA for the tutor login page or WordPress login page or both. By the way, to receive the email OTP, you need to set up an SMTP on your WordPress site. If you guys want a separate tutorial on this, let us know, we'll cover that in a different video. Alright, moving on, we have the fraud protection settings. Fraud protection is to help you to protect your website from spammers and bots. So let's click the toggle to enable fraud protection. Now you have to choose the method and location as in which pages you want fraud protection to be enabled on. So the available protection methods are honeypot, reCAPTCHA version 2 and version 3. The Honeypot security mechanism creates a virtual trap for bots. Enabling this option will create a hidden text input field. A bot would fill up that hidden text field and when it does so, it will automatically be banned from logging into the website. Google reCAPTCHA v2 will add Google reCAPTCHA v2 on the login and registration page. It will require the user to click on the I'm not a robot checkbox and submit an image recognition challenge like we are mostly familiar with. But reCAPTCHA v3 runs in the background and generates a score based on the user's behavior on your site. If the score is satisfactory, Google won't bother the user with any verification challenge. We recommend using Google reCAPTCHA v3 as this is the most advanced and secure fraud protection method available. So we can see that if we select reCAPTCHA v3, you have to provide a site key and a secret key. This is going to be the same for v2, but Honeypot does not require a key. And of course, we'll have a separate video on obtaining the keys for reCAPTCHA, so keep your eyes out for that. And lastly, you can set the fraud protection in multiple locations within your website by clicking on the checkboxes. Next up, we come to the limit active devices settings. Enabling this will let you control how many devices a student can be logged onto at once on your site. So once enabled, we can see this text box pop up. Here we can input numbers which will limit the number of devices one student can be logged onto at once. So if we set the number to say two, then a student can only be logged into your site from two devices. If they try to log into a third device, they'll be met with an error. After that, we have a fairly simple setting, email verification. Enable this option if you want to activate email verification during the signup process for a new student or instructor accounts. 
Once again, a forewarning, before you enable this, ensure that you've configured the mail server correctly. Otherwise, users won't receive the verification link and won't be able to complete the registration for your e-learning site. And lastly, we have the social login option. But there's a small setup to this. Social login will only be visible here after enabling the social login add-on. So you have to make sure that you've done that first. From Tutor LMS, we're going to navigate to the add-ons tab and we're going to find this social login add-on and make sure that this is enabled. Once enabled, you'll find the social login settings in the authentication tab. So social login enables users to use existing login information from a social network to log into the Tutor LMS platform or website. Tutor LMS currently offers social login functionality using Google, Facebook, and Twitter. So toggle to enable whichever login you want to add and you'll see a text box here. So for the social logins to work, you'll need to provide Tutor LMS the respective client or app IDs. So Google requires a client ID, Facebook requires an app ID and Twitter requires other app secret keys. Don't worry though, we will have separate videos on how to get these keys for individual social login options. So please be sure to check those out. And once you put these keys in, that's it. That's all you have to do. And social login will be enabled automatically. And there you have it folks. That was the overview of the Tutor LMS authentication tab. We hope this rundown helped you better understand what each of these options are intended to do. Be sure